what the frick is a fashion fan, man? Look, you guys seem to be loving how me, a fellow Gen Z, uh, born in the 2000s, is going back and checking out some of the cultural norms and some of the um, fashion trends like I'm going to check out now from way back before I was born. You guys want me to continue checking out these things, right? So I'm, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Look, I'm going to check out your fashion fans. Already I'm seeing the madness on the screen. Uh, <laughs> Look, I'm excited to get into this one, guys. Look, you're going to need some exclusive bonus content from me, so check out the Patreon. I've got four episodes of Marriage Children there for you guys want to see some 980 sitcoms. And, of course, support the channel as well as links how you can donate as well in the description as well. Uh, of course, um, smash the like button as well if you want to see more of this. And let me know what other stuff you want me to check out. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications because you guys be watching and not subscribing. Maybe some of you guys don't know how to subscribe, so I'll give... Give, I'll let you guys off. You know, some of you Gen Xers out there still get figured out the internet, isn't it? Um, but look, with that being said, don't dislike the video. Let's get straight into this video. Let's go. The 1970s was a time of political turmoil and change, but the decade also gave way to some far out fashions that made it pretty cool to experience. People from all walks of life helped to shape the fashion of the 70s. Whether you lived in the decade yourself or you're just a fan of the era's fashion, then sit tight. Those are some in this long... video, we will take a look back at some of the most popular fashions in the 1970s. Yo, I don't know what I'm about to say. During the right 70s, now. many women ditched their bras and instead opted for the tube top. This strapless style saw a surge in popularity by the end of the decade. This fashion was frequently worn by famous women like Cher, Bianca Jagger, and Suzanne Somers. No clue who those people are. Hot pants or okay. extremely short shorts was a term first coined by Women's Wear Daily in 1970 to describe itty bitty shorts. Itty bitty. Usually, these were made in luxury fabrics like velvet and satin. In the early part of the Bell. decade, designers offered high end versions of this fashion staple, while stores like Sears offered cheaper alternatives. Celebrities such as Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, Elizabeth Taylor, Nancy Sinatra, and yes, even David Bowie sported oh these. So even the the boys he wearing this is oh, that's crazy. Hey, look, hey, to reach their own, man, to reach their own. Um, yeah, I feel like the fashion in the nineteen seventies is probably the start of. I don't know, I feel like the downhill spiral of what you get nowadays because I me personally, I don't even think fashion nowadays is a lot better. I think I think it's just it's just going I don't even know what to I don't even know how to describe it. I think it's doing this like a roller coaster. Some things I like, some things I don't. I, this is <laughs> The seventies was all about flair and small collars were out while large oversized collars were in. They were worn by everyone, from Elvis to Mick Jagger, and they kept the button-up shirts from looking, well, buttoned up. Uh, what's this guy's name is again, bruv? Ah, oh, what's his name? John Travolta, oh, yeah. See, like, I'm learning, I'm Button up shirts from looking, well, buttoned up. Big collar, sweet collar. Platform shoes had a little time to shine in the 1930s, but their appearance in the 1970s edition of Seventeen magazine brought them into mainstream popularity. Okay. They were often worn with bell bottoms and covered in glitter or other colorful assortments. These shoes were typically worn by women in their teens and 20s, but there were also men who were known to wear these to the discotheque. A uh, number of celebrities... I see, I feel like I've seen that disco vibe with the platform high heel shoes or whatever. Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to put my hand up. I probably would have been rocking those back in the day. And I would have been in the disco. And I would have been listening to the Bee Gees, 100% also men who were known to wear these to the discotheque. Nice, nice. A number of celebrities adorned these shoes throughout the decade. Yeah, I would have been doing Corduroy that. material had been around for decades, but the 1970s saw the material become super fashionable. Bell bottoms and even full suits were made out of it. If you were a stylish dresser in the 70s, then you definitely had a corduroy in your wardrobe. Uh... One of the decade's most See, iconic outfits was John Travolta's white suit that he wore in 1977's Saturday Night Fever. This movie caused the popularity of the leisure suit to hit its apex. Wow, leisure. leisure suits frequently consisted of a fitted jacket, bell-bottom pants, and a button-up shirt which the top few buttons were left undone. Wow. Wrap dress. Wow, see, I was just talking about John Travolta and Saturday Night Fever. Like, I've done quite a few music reactions in like 1970 stuff. So, like, I would consider myself, you know, um, uh, how they say a, f 
a traveler, a tourist. I'm a tourist of the 1970s, especially. And for what I've seen, you know, um, I, I, I could see myself digging that John Travolta fit right there. I don't mind that one. I don't mind it. The buttons were left undone. It's different though. Wrap dresses were a staple among 70s trendsetters. They were more of a form-fitting alternative to caftans and loose maxi dresses. Designer Diane von Furstenberg is the one who is credited with bringing this knit jersey wrap dress to the market in 1974. Okay. By the end of the decade, she had created a fashion empire worth more than $100 million. Damn. Yeah, this... When it came, I was thinking I'm gonna see some crazy things here, but I'm actually kind of liking a lot of these. One hundred million dollars. That's, nice. That's actually nice. When it came to 1970s jewelry, you could never go wrong with big, bold, and gold. Uh, the decade yeah. saw a major resurgence with yellow gold jewelry, and particularly with thick yellow <laughs> gold chains. This trend also carried over into the 1980s and became uh, noticeable with the hip hop style. Right. Perhaps there is no bigger iconic style of the 1970s than bell bottoms. In the earlier part of the decade, husband and wife entertainers Sonny and Cher helped this style to gain an international following after they repeatedly wore them on their television show. Wow. These flared pants could be made in denim, bright cotton, Ooh. and satin polyester. It was certainly one of the decade's must-have fashions. No, I was gonna say, I've seen those quite a few times, you know, and I like that. I like that. I actually do like that. I can look, if I was around during these times, I would be digging stuff like that. I feel like I, I would. I feel like I would. Obviously, you're not going to see them nowadays at all, ever, ever, actually. Unless you guys still want to live live like you're in the 1970s. But listen, listen, those times are gone now. Let's just get with the new times. It's baggy jeans now. Well, yes, sir. <laughs> it was certainly one of the decade's must-have fashions. Micro miniskirts first became popularized in the 1960s. However, they became even more popular in the 70s thanks to feminists like Gloria Steinem identifying the trend as a form of liberation from longer hemlines of the decades oh, past. The mood ring wow. hit the market in 1975 and it became super popular. These oh, yeah, rings would change color in response to the wearer's body heat, which was supposedly a way of telling their mood. Some of the high-end versions sold for as much as $250. Since you probably no longer have one of these, then I'm sure you have no idea how you feel about it. Yeah, uh, you earn energy will cause what in the witchcraft is going on? Anxious, nervous, it turns black. Are you, te you guys telling me this mood ring will turn all these colors when you're feeling the type of way? No way that's accurate. No way. They just, I bet you this is just marketing, yeah? You, you guys have to confirm that one for me if that's actually how it was. You're telling me if you were relaxed and calm as blue, you're telling me the average normal contest content is green. Mixed emotions unsettled is amber. Look, you guys got to let me know if that's true. That is interesting. And then how does that work if that is Sheepskin coats were also known as shearlings. These were just as popular in the 70s as members-only jackets were in the 1980s. <coughs> they may only be considered a luxury item by today's standards, but they were available in every department store in the wow. 1970s. Sheepskin coats were defined by their buttery exterior and fleece interior. Halter like, tops were... Those fleece skin jackets, like... My, I think my dad has one of those hard, hard. Even nowadays, I see it nowadays. Like you said, it's a bit more luxury that I see those kind of bands. But, you know, sign of someone who, who, you know, has good fashion. I like that. I personally like that. ...and fleece interior. Maybe not that Halter one. tops were another hugely popular fashion item of the 1970s. They would tie around the neck rather than being held up by shoulder straps. Oh. Some of the big designers of the decade even incorporated them into their evening wear lines. Everyone who was someone seemed to be wearing these. Wow. I see Black those. leather jackets became a staple among punks in the 1970s and they have remained an emblem of the counterculture ever since. Just a couple decades earlier in the 1950s, they had been a hallmark of the greaser style. However, 70s punks customized their jackets with studs, patches, and pins. Wow. As punk rock wow. music grew in popularity during the 1970s, so too did the styles that were associated with this music genre. Oh, Some were wearing brightly colored mohawks, makeup, and even drain pipe jeans. Wow. 
For those that were wanting to ease into the style, studded belts became a way to emulate some of this subculture without a full Johnny Rotten look. Wearing Johnny just the belt was a lot more socially acceptable. Socially, yeah, uh, uh, that whole punk side of things, look, to reach the road, some of you guys like that kind of stuff. I personally am a bit scared by it. Like, I'm a bit like, whoa, like, ooh. I'm just gonna stay over here, you know? Uh, I don't wanna be, <laughs> I'm just gonna stay over here. Like. The belt was a lot more socially acceptable. <laughs> Creepers were a comfortable alternative to traditional platforms. They were still thick sold and became very popular among punks and hippies during the decade. Interesting. In more recent times, Rihanna has included Creepers in her collaboration of shoe lines. Okay. Headscarfs were popular among hippies in the 1960s, but they were also popular among stylish individuals in the 1970s. These scarfs were often made of polyester or silk and dyed in bright colors. They were usually worn as headbands or tied in a turban style. I like that. I like that. Jumpsuits were I've seen I've seen this quite a few in some of the shows I wear, but I didn't I didn't realize I was really a fashion trainer at the time. I, I, I like it. I like it or silk and dyed in bright colors. They were usually worn as headbands or tied in a turban style. Wait, what are they called? Sorry, what are they called? For recent time, headscarves were popular oh, among just headscarves, yeah. yeah for anyone that, that... Yeah, I don't mind that one. Jumpsuits were also something to have for anyone that was into fashion during the 1970s. Ooh. They came in an assortment of materials from polyester to fishnet and silk to macrame. Jumpsuits were worn by celebrities like Cher, Farrah Fawcett, and Jerry Hall. This one-piece garment was associated with the disco style and could be seen in clubs I like see. Studio 54. Yeah, I like that jumpsuit. Go. I like that jumpsuit. Yeah, this is given out there. Like, I feel like if you wanted to make a statement, this is probably where a lot of you guys would be going. And yeah, well, interesting. What I want to know from you guys is what type of person, like he's saying what this is more like, celebrities would wear it so i guess it's more bougie i don't know but you you guys let me know what kind of people individuals be rocking it what would it what is it, if you saw someone rocking this what does that say about their personality like i'll be curious to know that in the comments below let me know clubs like studio 54. go go boots first appeared in 1964 and the term has come to include any boots that are knee high square toed oh. and block heel Okay. In the 70s, the world's most famous models and actresses were spotted wearing a pair of these, from fashion icon Twiggy to the controversial bombshell Bridget Bardot. Wow. Before the 1970s, caftans oh. had a reputation of being frumpy house dresses or beach cover-ups. Oh. However, during the 70s decade, they came into mainstream. These figure-obscuring frocks became so popular that luxury brands began to start carrying them. That's Maxi dresses were similar to that. caftans in that they were long and frequently oversized. However, they typically had a more defined shape with plunging necklines, tie waists, and fitted sleeves which gave them a more streamlined look. Oh, this is like dresses though, no? Even this caftan feels like, okay, this one there is crazy. I don't know what it is in the 1970s as well and you guys and your designs, you know? You, there's so, you guys, I feel like there's so many tacky designs. Like, it's just like so many colors and shapes and... I look that's I prefer more simplistic things but I think that's what I'm more used to you know you guys actually went outside and enjoyed nature and you know us gener our generation doesn't really do that so I guess you know times have changed so we're probably gonna like different things but um it's just how do people wear that they, like how do you what, is you not get hot and then as long as it's gonna just get dirty on the like it's like a dress, but not rich. I don't know about that one, man. And to start carrying them. Maxi dresses were similar to caftans in that they were long and frequently oversized. However, they typically had a more defined shape with plunging necklines, tie waists, and fitted sleeves, which gave them a more streamlined look. Fast. I don't mind Wooden sided shoes dress. have been worn throughout Europe and Asia Whoa. for centuries, although it wasn't until the 1970s that clogs became part of mainstream fashion. Oh. These shoes were typically made with wooden soles, leather upper material, and visible metal studs that joined the two parts together. 
Clogs that had chunky heels became one of the go-to footwear styles of the 70s. Wow. I didn't see that Colorful tie-dye shirts gained traction during the hippie movement of the 1960s. Wow. But this psychedelic pattern saw its popularity rise during the 1970s. Anyone had the ability to create this look using little more than rubber bands and dye. Wow. Black leather jackets may have been worn by punks in the 70s, but everyone else who was into fashion was wearing brown leather with fringe. These jackets also That's... accompanied the rise in popularity of Western wear at the time, with bolo ties and embroidered button-ups also becoming major trends. Okay. I've, it... seen, I've seen those before, and even the, the one that you took in the psychedelic looking search, I search, I'd probably would have just been nowhere near that, because I am nowhere near psychedelics, man, just, yeah. And this one kind of reminds me of, like, this one kind of reminds me of, like, country, the countryside and stuff, like, you know, like, like country, so I feel like a country music person would be wearing something like that, I don't know. It's also becoming major trends. Likes Aviator style glasses were first used by pilots in the 1930s to help keep their eyes safe from irritants during flight. <clears throat> they were first created by Bosch and Loam in 1936, but in the 1970s they saw a surge in popularity. Fashion icons of the time, including Elvis Presley, brought this trend into the mainstream, but it was Bosch and Loam's Ray-Ban brand that flooded the market. Oh. Okay. Many of these items that we discussed were essential outfits and accessories of the decade. There is no doubt that every cool person in the 70s had at least some of these in their closet. I hope you enjoyed this little fashion flashback of the 1970s. Thanks wow. for watching. Wow, what a, what an introduction. So a lot of these I haven't heard before, like uh, some of the dresses. I even forgot like the name of it. But I mean, the one that surprised me the most, the ones I liked the most were the bell bottom jeans ones and the, uh, the I like the platform high heels with that combo. The one that um, John Travolta made popular, I like that one. Uh, the disco one. I definitely see me, if I was in 1970s, I feel like I'm starting to figure out that I would have been a disco kid. I would have been in the disco, doing up dancing, so like the, the Saturday Night Fever and stuff. I would have been in that room. If I could picture, oh, my chair almost fell. Oops. But yeah, if I could picture myself in the 1970s, I definitely would be in that, like that John Travolta style. I think I would have stayed away from the big jewelry. Maybe I would have dabbled into it. Um, And yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it to be honest. Uh, I did a lot of these were when were, were, were like interesting to me, and I have seen quite a few of them. Oh, and the sheep coat, I would have been dabbling in there quite a bit as well. It's interesting stuff, man. Look, uh, <laughs> that's with a general perspective on um, some of these nineteen seventies fashion fads. I still don't know what fads mean. You guys are gonna have to let me know what that means. Um, and guys, look, if made this point, let me know what you guys thought of these things. Was this true? Were, were these really popular? Was there any things that he missed out? And of course, leave me this point. Comment down a yellow heart so I know who my real ones are and who made this point. Uh, and let me know what you had to say about what the things I had to say. And um, uh, yeah, maybe some of your favorite fashion trends during the time that um, were covered or maybe weren't covered. Guys, look, with that being said, I've been a boy, Flex. This has been 1970s fashion fads. And for those of you guys who made this point, you guys have been absolutely wonderful. And I'll see you guys again. Peace.